Welcome back to Deluxe Guitar Songs. Today we have a little bit different of a video for you. I have this Vox AC30 behind me, and uh, the other day it just powered off. I was playing through it, everything was going great, sounded great, and then it powered off, and it wouldn't power back on. So I went on the internet and kind of was searching around to see what it could be. They said, check the fuses. So there's two fuses. I'm gonna show you those two locations today real quick. One was good. The one right underneath the plug was bad. So I replaced it, I had an extra one. It worked for a while and then it failed again. So I went online again, started searching around um, and a lot of them said that it could be your rectifier tube. And um, you know, this amp is 15 years old. The tubes have never been replaced. But it stays at home, it stays in this um, basement. So it hasn't been jostled around or anything. But being that it's 15 years old, I'm thinking that I probably just need to go ahead and replace the rectifier tubes. So what I'm gonna do is just check that fuse again. Um, side note, I just wired up this room for um, 20 amp GFI service and uh, I believe that doesn't have anything to do with this, but that was kind of going through my head. I wonder if running this amp on a GFI could have made that happen. But uh, the research I've done on the web does not support that. So I did find um, Tube Depot online and you could get a set of tubes, uh, I believe it's for like $90. So it comes with a, a GZ34 rectifier tube, that's $16. It comes with four EL84 tubes for the power circuit. And then it comes with, those are $40 total. And then it comes with uh, three um, ECC83s for the normal channel, tremolo, vibrato, oscillator, modulator circuit. So that's $32. Um, the only other tube on there, I believe, is one ECC81 phase inverter. Um, that does not come in the kit from Tube Depot. So what I'm going to do is just take a peek at it, see if that fuse is still blown. Um, and then I'm going to kind of open up the back of the AC30 and I'm going to show you guys kind of, you know, how, how it looks back there. So if you look right here under the plug, it's hard to see. There is an area where a fuse pop out and this is the one that blew on it, me. So I'm gonna take it out again. I just use a little pen and pull that out right there. And it kind of looks just like this. And it may be hard to see on the camera but it is, you can probably see the darkness right there. It is blown. So this is a, let me see if I could read it here. It's a three amp by, I think it's 250 volts. So it's a little tiny fuse. So obviously I'm gonna have to get uh, more of those. Okay, because I've used, I've now used the two that I had. So, like I said, the research I've done says that when this fuse is blowing, it is, it, it's going to be your, your rectifier tubes. So, there's another fuse right here. And if you could see that, the filament is still good in that. So, that's generally the first thing I check when stuff like this goes wrong. Um, I know a lot of people don't dive into this stuff, but I mean if I sent this off to someone to repair it and You know, I'm paying all this bench fees and when it's a couple dollar fuse if that So and, and of course, you know, if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, don't do it yourself So the next step is to I'm gonna lay this amplifier on its face and I'm gonna take off these screws just so I could get a peek in here and look at things, okay? All right, so I was able to remove the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws, screws with the Phillips head. 
So looking on the back of your amp, you have the model number. So mine's an, an AC30 CC2. It's a 212 combo amp. So let's see, I'll give you, you can probably see that just a little bit there. So you can see we're just seeing a little bit of the electronics we still haven't made it to seeing the tubes so i mean you literally have to take this thing completely apart to uh get to it you got your your um speaker switches right here and your your other your reverb right there as well so unplug those and I still don't even know, those might squeeze through. But essentially you have to like lift this up. And I don't believe there's any other connections, but you have to lift this up just to get to the tubes in the back. And it's, it's not light. I'm making sure there's not any more. Okay, there's a couple more screws down here. So there's, actually there's quite a few screws down here. Yeah, I'm seeing six more Phillips head screws. So I'm gonna have to get a smaller screwdriver to get to those. So like I said, there were three more screws on this side and three more screws right here. That just held all the circuitry in place. And now this should, you know, just slide right out, okay? So I put it back upright like this because if I had it laying down, just the weight of it would have been hard to lift out. So stand by, I'm gonna pull this guy out and we're gonna try to get a look at it. So it's very tight over here because you have these um, these little AB plugs right here. So I kind of had to lift up on that a little bit. But as soon as I was able to do that, the whole thing came out right here. I'm gonna sit it on my drum throne right here so we can get a better look at it. So here's what we're looking with here. So you can see we have three tubes back here. Yeah, one, two, three. We have one, two, three, four tubes right there and another one right there. So it looks like that's just you know eight tubes in total. I told you the kit comes with one GZ34 what was it, four EL84s and three ECC83s. So that will replace every single tube in this kit or in this amplifier. I don't know why I keep saying kit, it's not a drum kit. Um, but these are Sovtech. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is find Sovtech um, tubes for this thing, just so, well, here's an EL. ELEH Electroharmonics made in Russia. So I'd like to get the same tubes that were in here. The 12AX7. So I don't see any weird discoloration on any of these tubes. I mean, nothing that looks like it's blown. At the same time, I'm not an expert, and I'm sure you have to. I'm sure you have to test these tubes, so I'm hoping for a quick fix, like a, you know, hey, take the old ones out, put the new ones in. I'm pretty sure I would have to use um, a cloth glove. I don't think you're supposed to get any of your skin oil on these tubes. Um, obviously, the amplifier is not plugged in. But what we're going to try to do is match these up and get the exact tubes that I need to get so I could get this thing running again because I love this amplifier but like I said it's 15 years old I had a similar problem like this um, probably five years ago but I took the tubes out 
and when I put them back in, everything worked fine. So I guess I could try that again, but being that they're 15 years old, I don't think it'd be a bad idea to go ahead and replace them and go from there. So this concludes uh, my first video. This will be a two-part video. Once I order the tubes and get them in, I'll go ahead and uh, create another video showing me reinstalling these tubes. Um, so again, thanks for coming to the channel. I know this is not a guitar tutorial, but you know I didn't see any videos like this out on YouTube. So I wanted you guitar players out there that are a little uh, comfortable getting your hands dirty to be able to you know, see what I had to do to try to troubleshoot this thing to get it back to normal. So obviously if I replace the tubes and it costs me 90 bucks and the amp still doesn't work, it's gonna go to uh, a guitar tech, someone that actually knows what he is doing. And I got a guy in, I believe, just the city over from mine. So it's a quick drive. So thanks again for coming. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Any comments or feedback you have, please leave them down in the uh, description or in the comments section. Thank you.